Okay, start the ritual got to Squash, pumpkins, variety of different kinds. Some vines, the ones down here on the end, these are bushes. Come down here to the end. Oops, we have asparagus. It's to redo next year into a better bed. And we have more squash. Pumpkins. And we have some black diamond watermelons. Those are a surprise for my father-in-law. Tomatoes. The little fresh one. The young ones down there. Those are more pumpkins. Then we have tomatoes on the end. These are the first sweet potatoes I planted that I started inside the house. A few more. I've clipped off the tips. You can clip the tip off the vine and if you'll notice the wet spot those are the tips of the vines that'll make new sweet potato plants. This is a window box Roma. Started these guys by hand. These are three mini bell pepper plants. No clip they'll ever produce. Closer look on the tomatoes back up to the, to the woods. This is my grandfather's field corn. Very, very old, old stock. Those are his Red Ripper peas. Now this stuff is planted and at the very end is genuine cornfield runner beans. These, there's nothing done to these beds, these next two beds. So this is a couple of watermelon plants, more red rippers, and some sweet corn if you notice how pale the corn is. I have fertilizer to resolve that because I did not do anything to these two beds as a test for fertility and it is showing that the peas are producing well in their growth with nothing because they fixate nitrogen but the corn is suffering brutally. This is the next row. This is the Amish pie squash and hopefully it will make my yellow of Paris. I have three of these right here. Then there's different, there's two more acorn squash in the middle bush like the ones down at the end. These two right here. Now on the other end are some others different varieties and also right down here on the edge are my cucumbers they should have been trellised but my trellis didn't get here in time uh, scuff he's our resident box turtle he comes and gets himself a meal every so often out of the cucumber patch here's watermelons these will be crimson crimson sweet this is my patch of Cocazel zucchini squash. But if you'll notice, let's back up just a hair. The leaves are a little different on these underneath. It's because it's a different variety. Get up here, we have some peppers. We have our Cherokee purple heritage tomatoes. We have some eggplant. There's four of them in there. There's some pepper plants, more bell pepper plants, these different ones back there are pimento and cubanelle and mirror something else. I forget. Okra, Clemson Spineless. Really didn't have luck getting it started. So I planted some and now I have to transplant them into another bed so that they will grow into the yard. These guys, and if you'll notice, there's already okra started. This is horseradish, these tall leaves. This is my rhubarb. This plant has struggled all year out of the three. The other two have done great. If you look up in here, there's this little area right here in front of my hand is 11 squash, yellow squash plants. So if you look up in there, you can see a variety of ages. I collected about eight pounds since Friday. And let's run back down the row because I forgot to show you. You get over into these guys. This is the acorn squash. They produce quite a bit. You can see one right there. It's, it's pretty good size. There's more up in there. They run all the way across. But the biggest one 
actually the biggest two. hand is four inches across the palm. So, you can see that. It gives you an idea how big it is. We have a nice little view of the garden one last time. We're going to point this to the ground. We're going to walk out the gate, shoot down the fence. Now, the reason we're shooting down the fence is to show you I'm going to extend it all the way just to the left side of that center crepe myrtle to the north fence. I'll have to clean it out. See the T-post, the wood post. What we have here is the sweet potato bed. It is six feet by 23 feet. There's white Haymans. They are all finicky. They're really good, but they're a little finicky getting started. Then we have the Virginia Baker Sweets. I only had 25 of each, so I should... I still have over 25 alive. I gave them a deep watering yesterday specifically because I had to plant these guys and so what I have here is 78 vardaman. Some of them won't survive as we all know that's the way gardening goes not everything survives. Now right here it's kind of hard to tell but where my hand is there's a row of sugar cane and another row and another row. They do have roots coming out so they will start making soon. They will start pushing up. Now in this bed, see where my father-in-law blew some of the blades onto this bed. At the other end, there's a few more store-bought sweet potato sprouts at the very end, right down there. And then coming this way, all of the okra over there, I will plant and have lots of okra. And of course, this is where the next bed will be centered in here. It'll be centered, be four foot wide, approximately. And then over here, I'll come to the very edge of the crepe myrtles because that's where their root system can stop. And I'll only come over four feet so that when I complete the fence, I can put a grape trellis down through here and plant myself a couple of different varieties of grapes, mostly table grapes. I got my finger in there. But that's the garden. These are leafal gourd sponge, sponge gourd. And it's the loofahs you read about. You see the, the fake loofahs, the real loofahs. I'm going to place some trellising up these three wires so that they can climb better. They've just really started turning on in the heat. Here we have a group of dipper gourds and birdhouse gourd vines. They're climbing a little better, but they still need that trellis 